We are at the Glen. Watkins Glen International Raceway, round 5 of the 2012 Trans Am season, with the best, most competitive field we've seen all year. Last week it was vicious wind and brutal heat. This week it was lightning and thunderstorms at the Glen. It changed qualifying and affected the race outcome because of it. A past winner, Jorge Diaz Jr. brings his Jaguar to the Corvette show to change everything, maybe in victory lane. A teenager finds time from his summer break to lead TA2 to the green flag. And Trans Am honors its past and maybe its future through one man. Points leader, Simon Gregg. Welcome to a rainy Watkins Glen. This is round five of the 2012 Trans Am Championship. I'm Bill Wood with Alfredo Neen. Alfredo, they've been talking about this rain for several days. It's finally here. Oh, just as uh, New Jersey, the rain changed everything completely during the schedule of the weekend. And here at Watkins Glen, we can have the same thing. Only in out New Jersey, we had crazy temperatures and wild winds, but here it's just rain, and it poured down here. Right as we're talking now, qualifying has changed. We're not sure how it's going to change when it actually happens about two hours from now. Trans Am does not qualify in the rain, so they may turn the session into a practice session, but right now, the craziness is what's going to happen, whether or not they're going to be racing in the rain. Now let's go for a lap around the track with Puerto Rican driver Jorge Diaz. Hi, I'm Jorge Diaz. Let's go take a ride on the Watkins Glen racetrack. Here we're coming out to the main straightaway of Watkins Glen. We've got a big passing zone coming up here on the uh, straightaway. You want to do very late braking, late apex coming into corner one. As we're coming into uh, corner two, you want to really carry your speed coming up. This becomes the longest straightaway as we're coming into right, left-hand side and right-hand side again. Right here, you're really going to want to be all the way on the outside, carrying your speed so you can carry it going into the bus stop. You have to be very careful that you can get past right there as you're braking and going in. Once you get out of the bus stop and coming into the carousel, you want to make sure you're not too far into the outside. It becomes a very easy location to get past. You want to carry the car all the way to the corner. You're coming right now to turn nine and over to turn 10. These parts here are very important since you're gonna start coming uphill and you're gonna get all your weight carried to the rear. It's gonna make the rear wanna dance a little bit. But you gotta power it through for the last part of the turn. As you're coming here into uh, 13 again, you gotta watch out that somebody might be coming on your right hand side. You want to carry your speed in again, you want to go all the way outside so you can carry as much speed as you can to turn 14. As you're coming out of 14, you got to be careful with the wall that's coming up. It's actually closer than it appears. You're coming out into 16, and this is very important. This is a very fast part of the track as you're carrying speed, but you, wanna, you don't want to overdo it. You're going to have to carry as much speed as you can coming into this straightaway, which is more important than actually coming in faster. You want to exit out into Australia as fast as you can. And that's the uh, lap of Watkins Glen. Now a special tribute to Trans Am's past and a little bit of its future with points leader Simon Gregg. Simon Gregg, you come into your own as a driver now, son of Peter Gregg, one of the greatest drivers in Trans Am history. You've got your own history now. You're beginning to win races. You're the points leader here in 2012. We've got a painting here that is one of the uh, tributes to your dad. The, from the six hours in 74, uh, Peter Gregg and Hurley Haywood were the Trans Am winners. The Trans Am was included in that. It brings back a lot of memories, Bill. I, I spent a lot of time at this track as a kid. It was a really important venue um, with, for endurance racing and you know, all the other series. Um, it's, everything's come full circle now. Um, I'm living the dream of following Dad's footsteps, and I, I'm excited to be leading the Trans Am points, have a shot at winning the championship. Me and the Durhog Motorsports team have everything going our way this year. So we've got something special for you. This is the original painting that we have here on the wall uh, that we were able to get for you. This is a very special time. That's so excellent. I, that's a beautiful artwork, and it, it, that's, that's priceless. I, I can't wait to have that hanging on my wall at home. And I love thinking about my dad and, you know, his, his old cars were always beautiful like that, and, and that's wonderful.
your dad was a, a very special man to a lot of people, but I guess he was very special to you also. Great tribute. We'll have racing right after this. This segment is brought to you by GoRacingTV.com for racers by racers. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keene. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. So let's go on to the start of the race. Round five, the Trans Am Championship for 2012. This is at Watkins Glen International Raceway. Rain washed out qualifying. Race officials had to use the fastest practice times to get a final starting lineup. That was led by Jorge Diaz, who's joining the Trans Am Series for the first time in 2012. He's from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Beside Jorge Diaz will be Simon Gregg. Bonte Verde Beach, Florida, he's the points leader. Amy Rumans from Kent, Ohio. John Baucom, Matthews, North Carolina. Blaze Sheeta from Ballantre, Ontario, Canada. That's our top five. Six through ten is Andrew Romaki, Alan Lewis, Denny Lammers, Ian Patterson, and Bob Monette. Tony Ave, the two-time defending champion, Worked with Doug Peterson's car all weekend. Never got an official time of his own. He'll start 11th. Maybe the biggest headline of the weekend, though, came in the TA2 qualifying. Cameron Lawrence, a 19-year-old teenager from the University of Central Florida, was the fastest in practice. He starts on the TA2 pole, followed by his teammate, Pete Halsmer. They're both at Miller Racing. The lone global GT driver, David Cease. Cease is in a Porsche. His times are right there with the TA2 drivers. Followed by Kurt Rorick, Tom Sheehan, Michael Wilson, second in points as you start the race. Ricky Sanders, Jeff Fain, Mel Shaw, Joe Sturm. Bob Stretch, the defending champion, he'll start last. He crashed his car in practice. He'll start with a new car. There's the drop of the green flag and everybody's moving, including Jorge Diaz moving off the front and Tony Ave. Oh, Tony Ave starting from 12, right from the back of the Transam field, but easily going through all the Transam cars right at the first lap. Passing them on the outside. You're not supposed to be able to do that, but he's got momentum and he's taking advantage of it. Definitely another great start for Amy Room and started third didn't lose any time to go for second under Simon Gregg. And Ave started 12th. He's already moved to fifth in the first lap. Jorge Diaz also taking control of the race right at the start. Quickest out of the box since Friday, showing a lot of speed to Puerto Rican drivers. That Jaguar XKR, it looks good to be in this field with all the Corvettes and Camaros and Mustangs. It's good to have some diversity in Trans Am. Now here's defending champion Bob Stretch, points leader in TA2. He's going to take Kurt Horig and David Cease. He's catching them going into turn one, but he's going to pass them on the inside, under braking, and exits the corner, headed for the S's where he had a problem earlier in the weekend, lost his original car, the yellow Camaro. He had to get this new one. Uh, well, we moved to a new car, and uh, we had to put a motor in the new car, and kind of, it's a car that's never been run, so we had to basically finish building the car here at the track. Uh, I was fortunate to have it, and, uh, you know, we didn't get any uh, time in the car. We didn't really get a qualifying session. I took it out for uh, the tire scrub session. Never really did a full lap in this car, so the race is going to be interesting. Man, you're not supposed to be able to do that. That's a TA2 car, much slower than that Jaguar TA car, and he gets under him and passes him. Just getting the feel of that new car. What a great job in the hands of the team. Great job again in, with the Trans Am 2 defending champion, Bob Stretch. And Jorge Diaz and Amy Ruman. Look at that separation from points leader Simon Gregg, Bauckham and Ave. Ave takes over Bauckham immediately. It was just the start of the race, three laps already into this 29-lap uh, race, but he doesn't want to lose any time because Diaz and Ruman, they were just disappearing in front. He's got Greg in his crosshairs. You think he can get around him right, right as I say that? He gets under him going into the boot. 
Oh yeah, Abbott right there taking third in the hands of uh, Simon Gregg, the points leader. Here we see now Michael Wilson, uh, who promised for another win here uh, in Transem 2, having some problems. He's having some problems with his rear suspension. He's wobbling there like he doesn't have complete control of the car, and he moves to the center of the track, almost takes out Kurt Horick. Bam, he loses control into the wall, and his day is done. Oh, definitely a day is done. At that same lap, also Canadian driver Blaise Sheeta in his second race of the year. Again, bad luck for the Gateway Racing team owner. He's got several cars there. They all seem to have problems, but all of that debris brings out a full course caution. The cars now are lined up behind Jorge Diaz, the race leader, Amy Ruman, and Tony Ave has moved into third place. That's the front of the line. A lot of that racing that's happened has come under braking in Trans Am. The Trans Am brakes, they're really good brakes. Our tech feature is on Trans Am braking. Let's take a look. Today's Tech Talk is about brake, and Jim Durhack is going to explain to us why are they so important in road racing. Well, Alfredo, in road racing, you use the brakes a lot more than you do in most other forms of racing. You know, sometimes the guy with the best brakes at the end of the race wins. Did you use the same brakes in the front and the rear of the car? No, the front of the car does the lion's share of the braking, so your front brakes will be much larger than the rear and do a, a lot more of the work and generate a lot more of the heat. How is the maintenance in a, uh, with brakes on a race car? Very intense. You're continually rebuilding calipers, replacing pads and rotors. Talk to us about the brakes that you're using in Simon Gress car. These are metal matrix calipers, four pad, four piston, and we have to put a tremendous amount of air on the brakes to dissipate the heat. Sometimes, like on a street course, you'll even use water. Give me, give me some more details about cooling the brakes. Well, we've got a five inch brake duct that runs right to the center of the rotor, and the rotor acts like a fan, and all the air comes out and cools the brake. Thank you, Jim Derek. This segment is brought to you by GoPro. Wear it, mount it, love it. Let's spend a few minutes with Cameron Lawrence, a TA2 driver who is in the Miller Racing car this weekend in the Camaro. How does it like to be on the top of the ladder? It's very nice. Um, we've worked hard with my car, and it's just not as fast as these newer cars. They're just better built, and the team is just top-notch, and you, you can't beat the crew, and you can't beat the help from Pete. Did you know about Pete Halsmer and his experience in Trans Am before you met him this time around? Um, I've heard things about him, and my dad remembers watching him on TV, you know, vividly. So he remembers Pete, and as I get to know him, you find out more and more about the guy, and it's never-ending, the stories and knowledge and just how much he knows. is It's incredible. You get any mentoring from him? Is he helping you? Absolutely. He's probably the greatest role model you can have in racing because he's, he's, he is the old guy, but he's one of the most fit guys and one of the most sharp guys, and thinks the hardest about everything, set up, the cars, just anything you can imagine, Pete's on top of it. So it's it's a huge help. Is there a chance that this is going to be more than a one-off? Are you going to have a chance to run again? Um, we'd like to. That'd be uh, the plan. But we got to talk to Mike and Mr. Miller and see what he says about it. Um, nothing's in the works right now as far as we know. So we'll see how it goes. We still plan to run our car for the rest of the season, and we'll be around. A college student knocking off these old men. Congratulations, dude. All right, we're behind the pace car. That kid, Cameron Lawrence, is going to have a huge impact on racing. But the look at the impact Jorge Diaz is having on this field, the green flag, and he takes off again. Good start also from Simon Gregg. Look how the fight he put on uh, Tony Abbott for third. Gregg used to give up on points like that, but now he's racing hard. Man, the gap that Diaz has on Ruman and the rest of the field, he's got him covered. He just checked out. He remember he was fastest right out of the box. 
Since 2009, he hasn't raced. He's back and he's fought for good in Trans Am. Here's Stretch chasing the Miller team. Oh, we just look at Cameron Lawrence. He What a great start, but now he's fallen back. He's got a problem. We just heard about it. What a great effort he was getting and the help from Halsmer. Halsmer now is up to Halsmer to carry the Miller team. But Stretch, he's gone bananas. Look how he's just on Halsmer's tail right there. Let me tell you, Bill, I was definitely surprised by the pace that Bob Stretch was able to put in that new car. And the pace also from that little Porsche in GGT, David Cease. But once you pit in Trans Am, you're done. Cameron Lawrence comes in. We found out later that his power steering pulley was gone. He rejoined the race, but he still was basically out of what was going on. This is Alan Lewis, who had some problems. He's now sidelined, but no problems for Jorge Diaz. He continues to build on his lead, lapping cars. Very first time on this track, I got to tell you I love it. Um, there are a lot of uh, sweepers that you have to maintain high speeds. Uh, carrying your speed around most of the corners, it's, it's a lot of fun. So Jorge Diaz is having fun. The traffic is all behind him. A good sight here with the two Jaguars, even though Diaz is getting ready to put the move on Manette, it's just good to see other cars there besides Camaros and Corvettes. And look at the fight between Tony Abbey and Amy Ruman. Abbey goes to second with this move. Puts a move under Ruman. Ruman said later that her brakes were going away, but that's just momentum. Ave sees some competition from Diaz and takes off after him. Traffic. We talked about it. We will see that later during the race because Tony Abbott will be able to get close to Jorge Diaz. Will he be able to pass him? That's the big question. That's the entire question right now. Round five, Watkins Glen, Trans Am season. Let's see if Ave can catch Diaz right after this. This segment is brought to you by Speedcom Communications racing radio systems and scanners. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. The TA2 cars now are really going after it. Bob Stretch is closed on Pete Halsmer. Halsmer's doing all he can to hold him off, but Stretch is not going to be denied, it looks like. He's really got Halsmer in his sights and wants a piece of him right now. Halsmer with the mirrors full of a red car. He's not used to that. He's used to seeing Cameron Lawrence in the red Camaro, his teammate in front. This is the new car of Bob Stretch, taken first. Taken first in TA2. He's gone all the way from the back of the TA2 line, worked his way through the field into first place. Halsmer doesn't seem to have an answer for him right now. Midway in the race right there, both drivers looking pretty strong in the Trans Am 2 class. A stretch, taking the advantage in front of Halsmer. So we're back to this battle for third place with Rorig and Sheehan. Rorig, the engineer, rebuilt some shocks for Sheehan, gave him three seconds a lap. Uh, big, big shout out to Rorick Engineering. Uh, we had some real, real shock problems, a real bad handling car. We've been kind of chasing it all, all year long. And uh, uh, Kurt was uh, kind enough to, to get his shocks ready for us and ship them up overnight. And we got them on for the last practice. And uh, we didn't really get a chance to dial them in, but it made a, obviously a big difference in our, our speed. So we found a little speed there with the shocks. Got a lot of speed. Three seconds a lap is, is phenomenal. There he is putting some pressure on Rorick. Passes him on the inside, coming out of the turn. Still sticking around. Ave is trying to put some pressure on Jorge Diaz. Diaz has shown he's got the field covered, but Ave is not used to being covered himself. He's going after him hard. Well, definitely taking advantage of the lap traffic. Was able to shorten the difference between him and Diaz. Less than a second at that moment, and Diaz mirrors full of the yellow Corvette of Tony Abbey. Coming all the way through the field, Ave has really done a good drive. It's good for him to get some miles on the car. He's had problems all year. Amy Ruman running alone here in third, just keeping a steady race. You know when you're 
not in the game and you probably can't win. But honestly, you never know who's going to fall out. You never know what's going to happen five laps to go or even two laps to go. And, and if you're right there still, you might pick up that win on someone else's attrition or, you know, different circumstances. So I, I never give up until the end. And you shouldn't give up. Anything can happen. Diaz has been roaring through the field. Can he finish? Can Tony Ave catch him? We'll look at the end of the race right after this. This segment is brought to you by TrackMate Data Systems. Simply the best. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keene. We're gonna take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're gonna show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. We're back, one of the battles on the track for fourth place. Points leader Simon Gregg is going after John Bakker. This round five will definitely be the best uh, race of the year. The biggest car count and uh, we have the best battles in the field between uh, different uh, uh, drivers. This is Spoken with Simon Gregg right in front of them, the 5 for 3 in Transcend 2 between Rorick and Sheehan. Wow, what a race at the Glen. Greg is showing a lot of patience right here. He couldn't pass him at one corner. He waits for the next one and dives under him and takes fourth away from Bauckham. And they have this fight right from the start of the race. Look at Tony Evans' windshield. The windshield has got oil. That's what that is. Somebody's dropping oil on the track and it catches Ave out. All of that work that he's done is down into the tires right now. He was losing sight from Jorge Diaz and at that moment he lost control of his guard. He was set for a podium finish, his first of the year, but now he's out of the podium. Now the big battle will be decided is Bob Stretch and Pete Halsmer. Halsmer gets a round stretch right there, maybe Stretch, maybe he's overused the car, maybe it's a new car, maybe he's overused his tires or overused the car, but Halsmer gets around him, there's smoke. Oh, bad luck for Bob Stretch. What a weekend to forget for the Trans Am 2 defending champion. He ruined his yellow car that he got all those points with, and now he's to the sidelines, leaving the front of the story to Jorge Diaz, who gets a, a win going away, had the field covered. When Ave left, it was just a time attack, an easy run for Jorge Diaz. Let's get to him in victory lane. Jorge Diaz. You slammed them from flag to flag. Congratulations. Thank you. We were really looking forward to, uh, to this race. We were looking forward to the suspension setup that we have and that, uh, that we used, and it definitely just worked flawlessly. What happens now? You'll be ready for Road America. You're coming back. You're going to stay with the series from now on? Well, uh, we're, we're looking forward to Road America. We're looking to see if we can uh, land a good sponsorship that might uh, bring us forward to racing the whole year. Um, we'll, we'll really see what, what happens, but I know that we're going to get ready. We're going to watch what we did. We're going to learn from this race and, and look forward to that one. Pete Halsmer, I'm tempted to say we got to stop meeting like this, but I'm sure you like it because you're in victory lane. I'm up for it. I'm up for it, yeah. Any, how did you like this competition? You had to come back. You didn't lead from flag to flag. You had to battle to the end. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of good guys. Uh, well, a couple. I mean, there's a bunch of good guys in this series, but it ends up being usually one or two or three guys right at the front that you end up battling with, and I've been fortunate enough to be in that battle. Cameron filled in for Mike Miller uh, this race and just did an excellent job in the team car, and he was leading for a little bit, and I thought that's probably what it was going to be like if nobody had a problem, but uh, he had a power steering belt problem, just like I had in practice. And uh, so that unfortunately, unfortunately took him out, put him back a ways. And then Bob Stretch came through the field uh, after he had an accident in practice. And, uh, and we ended up having a pretty good battle. And then he had a problem near the end. So, so we were fortunate again. And uh, you know, if you stick around and be right there and ready for anything, a lot of times it happens. 
So here's the finishing order, round 5, 2012 Trans Am season. We're at the Glen. Jorge Diaz comes on board, its first race of the year, and wins, going away. Amy Ruman is second by some 13 seconds. Simon Gregg third, the points leader. John Bauckham and Tony Ave, a great comeback that falls short. Andrew Romaki and Bob Monet, they were also TA finishers. In TA2, Pete Halsmer, Tom Sheehan, and Kurt Rorick, that's our podium. Jeff Fain comes from Australia to finish fourth. Joe Sturm finishes fifth. Bob Stretch had a great comeback that fell short. He finishes sixth. Mel Shaw is seventh. Looking at the Trans Am category points, after round five, Simon Gregg leads at 140 points. Amy Ruman is 131. Doug Peterson, who wasn't at the Glen, he's at 108. Tony Ave's got a long row to hoe before he can get his championship back. He's fourth. Denny Lammers is fifth. There you can see the other points getters in the Trans Am category. The TA2 points after round five are just as close. Defending champion Bob Stretch is leading at 141. Pete Halsberg is at 121. Michael Wilson, bad luck at the Glen, puts him down to third. Kurt Roig is fourth. Tom Sheehan is tied with him at 107. Mel Shaw is sixth. Let's go to Alfredo Nin in victory lane. What another great race in the 2012 Transcend Series Championship here at Watkins Glen International Raceway. What a great way to come back for Puerto Rican driver Jorge Diaz Jr. who showed lots of speed throughout the whole weekend and went on to win from Paul. Behind him, lots of action in Trans Am, the biggest car count this weekend. In a few weeks, we will go to Road America, where we expect a bigger car count in Trans Am and in Trans Am 2. From Watkins Glen International, I am Alfredo Nin. I expect you enjoyed this show. See you in a few weeks' time at Road America.